I'm Finster. And I'm Kegster. Hey Kegster, have you ever looked at a video game and thought, I'd like to make something like that? Every day, Finster. But guess what? What? Today, we're going to make our very own Danger Mouse game by learning how to code in Scratch. How does that sound, Kegster? I'm too excited. This is Jetpack Joyride, the 2D endless runner. Subway Surfers is a 3D runner, similar to Danger Mouse. The difference between 2D and 3D games is that 2D games are made up of lots of images all moving around on the screen, zooming in and out and changing colour. But 3D games are made up of 3D objects moving around in a virtual 3D world. We're going to be creating a 2D game that looks like a 3D game, all using Scratch. Finster, how are we going to create our own game in Scratch? Simple Kegster. You guys can follow us along at home. All you're going to need is your computer, you're going to need Scratch running in your browser, and the Sword of Gargamel! Um... Maybe not that, but it helps. When you open Scratch on your browser, there are a few different panels that you're going to see. You'll see the main panel on the top left, called the stage, where we see our characters and objects, known in Scratch as sprites. Underneath the stage, you'll see the sprites panel. This is where all of our characters and objects will be stored. In order to control these objects, we need to look at the scripts panel. The scripts panel dictates what our characters and objects will do. You can see that there are a lot of options available, like motion, look, sound, sensing, and events. In this lesson, we won't be working with data, operations, or more blocks, so you can ignore those for now. You'll also see some tabs at the top here. We're in the scripts tab now, but you can see there is one for costumes and one for sounds. That's where we can add any new sprites or sounds when we need them. And that's it. That's what we'll be using to create our game. Now that we know a little bit about Scratch, I think we're ready to start. Finster, do we have everything we need? Finster? Fine. Now the first thing you'll want to do is to unzip your workshop files. Then put the files somewhere that you'll remember. Next, open up Scratch and open up the project Endless Runner up screen in the workshop folder. You should see Danger Mouse now. And if you press the green flag button, you should see Danger Mouse running up screen on a three lane road. Objects like police cars will be coming at you as you run. You can use the left and right arrows to avoid them. I'll be honest, Finster, this backdrop is just not doing it for me. I think we need a lot more color. That's not a problem, because we can head over into our costume tab and we can add a couple more buildings. First, you want to select the first sprite below the stage. This one is called Building Right. Then, select the costume tab at the top of the screen. Here you'll see the two main buildings that you can see when we press the green flag. Press the Upload Costume button just under the new costume text. Then select any costume that is in the Buildings Right folder. You can see that we have buildings from the Pixel Pickle, Pink Tank, and from the Let It Snow Arena here. Add as many buildings as you like, or create your own by colouring them in. To colour, select a building and use the brush icon or the shapes icon like this. And then you click on the buildings to colour it in. You'll want to do the same process with the buildings on the left side. Why don't you try that on your own now? If you get lost, go back to this point and watch the steps again. You know what I'm thinking, Finster? What's that, Kegster? I'm thinking it's time for a change. I think we've got to get some penfold in there. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> Before we start back up, let's change our Danger Mouse for penfold. We need to select the DM sprite in the sprite panel down below. Right click the sprite, then click duplicate. This creates a second DM sprite called DM2. We're going to change the name from DM to Penfold for the duplicate sprite. Now select the Costume tab. You'll see all the Danger Mouse sprites here, but we need to change these to Penfold, so we're going to go ahead and delete all of these. You'll have one left over, but don't worry, you can delete it once we add in some Penfold images. Press the Upload Costume button, then select all of the costumes that are in the Penfold folder. Drag the penfold sprites into the right order, as they may not come over correctly when you import them. Lastly, delete the old Danger Mouse sprite from earlier.
Now we're definitely ready to play. Finster, what is it that every good game needs? Not that. What? What's that? That's nothing. Anyway, every good game needs lots of explosions and fast-moving objects hurtling towards us. I couldn't agree more. Why don't we add some obstacles and explosions to the game? Okay, let's start with adding a box. First, let's go into our sprite field and click the police car middle sprite. Right-click the sprite, then select duplicate to create a second sprite. We're going to rename this second sprite box middle. Head into the costume tab while the box middle sprite is highlighted. We can delete out the old police car images and replace them with a box image. Press Upload Costume from the File button and select the costume in the Boxes folder. We need to change the script for the box, so we're going to go over to our script tab and change when the box appears. You'll see a lot of text here, but basically what it's saying is, when you hit the green flag, this item will randomly appear every few seconds. Because this has the same script as the police car that we copied it from, it means that these two objects will appear in the exact same spot each time. We don't want that. That's weird. Yeah, that's weird. This is crackers! We just need to change the numbers inside of the wait scripts for the box sprite. So change the number here and here. We can also change the speed of the police cars to make the game more challenging. Go into the script for either police car and adjust the speed to 0 0.3. Now, when we try to play, this police car will be flying dangerously fast at me. So, Kegster, what happens in our game when you hit the box? Same thing that happens in real life when you punch a box. A massive explosion! That's right. So let's see how to add that explosion into our Scratch game. Select the box sprite from the sprite field. Then add a costume to the sprite. Use the explosion costume in the explosion folder here. Now click the sounds tab and upload the explosion sound. We need to update the script. So let's go into the script tab for the box sprite and see what it says. It's saying if the distance to your character is less than 80 pixels, then the costume will switch to an explosion Play an explosion sound. And the game will end. Let's make sure we make this explosion noticeable. 100% sound good? 100%? What kind of game is this? 200% obviously. No. We can't do 200%. No one's ever gone to 200% before. It's going to blow. It's going to blow. Calm down, calm down, Finster. You're being bombastic. What are you afraid of? It's going to be a blast. You quite done? You're just bursting with impatience, aren't you? Okay, I'm done. Good. Anyway, let's see how our game plays now. Well, oh, that was awesome. Why don't you guys try to create your own levels at home? Send them on to us, and if they're really good, we'll play them on the next show. I've been Fenster. And I've been Kegster. Till next time. <laughs>